Hey guys, welcome to Duck Duck Diecast. So for today's video, I decided to make it a little bit special. So these are my two first auto arts that I've ever purchased. And this has got me addicted. So on the left side, we see that blue Calsonic JGTC GTR R34. And on the right, the black one is the R35 GTR. A friend of mine suggested me to do this video. So I decided, you know what, that's a great idea. So I appreciate it. And here we are. So before we begin the review on this one, I just want to have a quick background so you guys would get to know the history, how I got this car. So I actually started collecting Hot Wheels first. And that's where I found these cars along with it. And I was asking him, hey, are you selling these? And he said, yeah, for sure. So I jumped right in it just for this car. I didn't really care about the R35 as much, but it was basically a combo package. So it definitely made it a lot cheaper. So here I am, stopped collecting Hot Wheels and I'm collecting Auto Arts and other 118 diecasts. So one more thing is that as soon as I got this car, I researched more and I found that they do more JGTC cars, which stands for Japanese Grand Tour and Championship. And I just enjoyed it. I just can't stop collecting more. So expect a lot more JGTC cars in the future. I'm definitely going to stagger it for you guys so it's not too boring or redundant. But yeah, like I started collecting a lot of those and I was like, okay, this is too much. So I decided to just stop and focus more on other diecast models and I went from there. Right, now it's time for the review. So first of all, that blue livery, I don't know if you guys play Gran Turismo, but there's always that one Calsonic. It was the R32 GTR Skyline, I believe. And it was this amazing blue color. So, and they still maintain the livery all the way until the R35, but yeah, this is the R34, and yeah, it's still the iconic blue that they use for the Calsonic livery. So that's an awesome car. I do love the details on it. It's a very simple livery. It's just a few brandings on the side there. Love the color. Unfortunately, this car has no opening parts. It's called a sealed body. So that's why i also decided to make two cars on this video just so it's not like oh here's a sealed body and then that's it i wanted to make it interesting i'll have a sealed body and then i'll have an opening one as well all right now let's check the front of the car okay so the first thing that i see is that emblem it's definitely a separate piece so that's a good addition and if you look at those hood pins they are actually a separate piece from the car and i appreciate that i know in the recent model that i did the uh, porsche 911 carrier rsr turbo it wasn't a separate piece i wish they did it this way same with this model and now before we go on the other side of the car i just want to quickly show you guys look at that tow hook up there that's really interesting, right on top of the hood. Usually it's on the bumper, but hey, this one's by the hood. And then if you look at the arrow on the vehicle, you can see that is actually a replica carbon fiber. And the decals and the detail are pretty much the same on the other side as well. There is one difference on the vehicle though. If you clearly look right on the side skirt there, on the rear wheel, you can actually see the exhaust. So it's actually a through and through exhaust, it's well made. And then if you look closely at that side skirt, it's that black carbon fiber again. Very nice added touch. To be honest with you, for a non-opening model, it's actually very well detailed and eventually we'll definitely get to the interior but yeah like it's such a shame that it doesn't open 
but they did the craftsmanship very well for a non-opening model. And as we get to the rear, you can see that huge wing. Also see the other end of the tow hook, which is on the right hand side. And for the details on the tail lights, it's not that bad. Okay, before I start reviewing the bottom of this model, I just want to point out how heavy it is. It's really heavy. Alright, anyways, so front to the back as always. So there's not much suspension detail going on, especially right on the transmission housing. It's not too much, but as soon as you get to the midpoint, you do see a drive shaft. And then towards the rear, again, it's covered. Most of the parts are covered. It's like, I'm not sure if it's meant to have skid plates, probably. But yeah, it's mostly just covered up. And yeah, you see the detail in the tow hook there. And that's about it. A few vents. Yeah, there's not much to see back here. Yeah, let's look more detail on those wheels, rotors, and calipers. So it looks like they are slotted. Very nice addition. The brake calipers look like they are APR racing. I'm trying to get a good view here. And let's see here. Yep, looks like APR racing. I don't know if you guys can see from my angle here. And I notice on the front here, they have more slots on the brake rotors. So that is really awesome detail. I can't believe they actually uh, made it exactly how it is. They didn't cut corners or anything. Okay, time for the interior. So I'm gonna try to focus on it since they aren't opening parts. So I'm gonna do my best to show you guys the highlights and maybe increase the lighting on some certain areas just to help it out. So first thing we see is the Alcantara style steering wheel. It's got some details on the steering wheel as well aside from the cockpit area looks like a sequential transmission very nice addition to that and we also see a little bit of the roll cage from the rear and a little bit on that a pillar as well that seat backing looks like it has a carbon kevlar ish decal at the back very nice addition and let's look at that seat belt harness i want to say harness in the front here Oh wow, that's a surprise. It's actually fabric in there. So that's a nice addition. It may not be fabric, it could be like a, some type of nylon, but uh, still the effort is definitely commendable there. It's definitely better than plastic, that's for sure. And then we go to the front. We see that dash there is actually flocked, so that's a nice addition. There are some plasticky parts like that silver piece right there, but uh, it's not too bad. And now closer to the passenger side, well, there technically isn't a passenger side. But we see more of the roll cage, the other side of the A-pillar support beam. Yeah, there's not much to see on this side, aside from a few decals here and there. Floor pan seems empty, we don't see much, and then we see more of the rear roll cage very intricate. It feels a bit plasticky but it almost looks like it's painted to that blue color. We see that harness wrapped around there. Okay now moving along to the second car of this episode. So first of all I noticed that beautiful jet black paint. It's a very attractive color when I first got the car it's very dusty so it definitely needed a polish and a waxing and that's what I did so as you notice if you look at the side view mirror there you can see some residue and unfortunately when I bought the model it was previously repaired I didn't ask the uh, previous owner who or 
what happened to it but as soon as i got home that's how it was so it's kind of unfortunate but it is what it is i don't usually display my model on this side anyway it's always on the other side it's always on a display case so it is what it is there's nothing we can do about it and there are a few paint rashes right there by the door i don't know if you guys can see it it's really minuscule yeah it's just right there but it's not a big deal but yeah, aside from that, the uh, components of the car all around, they look great. I, I'm not a big fan of road cars as much, but the GTR, you gotta have a GTR. So this is something that I would actually want in my collection as well. It's not my favorite, but it's definitely something that I would definitely have. And it's getting upwards in price as well. So as we're moving a little bit here to the front, we can see that beautiful jet black gloss paint just with the reflection. No wonder why these cars are going up in price. Alright, now in the front, we do see that nice GTR logo. It's very in your face. And then you also see headlights. It's kind of okay. It's a little bit plasticky as you zoom in a little bit closer. And then you see those vents by the hood. It's not that bad, but it is also a little bit plasticky. Like you could just tell just by looking at it. And the other side is identical. The only difference is you don't see that goop residue on the side view mirror. And there are a few areas where there are more paint rashes, but as you can see, it's really, really hard to notice. Moving towards the rear, I do see the detail of that heating element at the back there. That's pretty cool. Alright guys, so while we're here in the exhaust area, I just want to quickly mention to you guys, look at that grill. Very detailed grill. Looks like uh, metal and the exhaust are through and through. And we go back to the rest of the rear of the vehicle. So we do see that nice Nissan logo and that GTR badge. The badge is a little bit crooked on the side there, not really noticeable, but yeah, they are nice because they are separate pieces. They're not like a decal or anything like that. I am not sure how I feel about the taillights, they look a little bit plasticky. I wish they had like another layer underneath there just to make it a little bit more metallic in the inside, but it is what it is. Right, now the under chassis of the model. So there's a lot of skid plates down here, lots of panels where it actually covers more of the suspension detail. And I know most modern cars do have these covers but it would have been nice to be able to take it off and actually see some more suspension detail. Anyways, we'll go straight to the midsection there. And it's very plasticky in that silver part. So I don't know how I feel about that, but the pipe from the rear, that bronze tubing there, very nicely done. It looks very metallic, so I'm really happy about that part. Yeah, let's just take a quick closer look here and yeah like it's a really nice paint job for it and if you look at the back there I'm not sure if that's carbon fiber or whatever like a replication but I do like that back piece there okay now for the wheel detail we do see those disc brakes as drilled and that's a really nice, accurate, orange Brembo brake caliper. Like you can kind of see it from there. The OEM wheels, I love the color. They are pretty accurate. And the thing about this, okay, so it's also the same. But if you notice, they are a little bit different. You can see that it's staggered at the back. So it has a different offset compared to the front. So let's look at that again. So you can see front and the rear is a little bit more in. You can see it's a different offset. So that's nice. 
He definitely paid attention to detail there. All right, now for the interior. So as you can see, the car inside seems a little bit plasticky. And as soon as I saw those seats, it's very evident. But as soon as you look away from all that plastic, you can see a lot of carpet as well. You can see the finer details in the car. And this is where the details, fine details, start popping up. So if you look inside the interior there, you can actually see the center console. It's fully packed. There's a lot of decals in it. There's even a decal on like the center console where the touchscreen should be. And there's some decals on the steering wheel. So this is where the attention to detail and the love for this brand came into life. And then as we move to the door card, you're even going to see that speaker right there. It's so realistic, like that speaker cover from this angle. It looks so realistic, you can even see my reflection on that rear view mirror. So even the plasticky of the door handles there, it doesn't look plasticky to me. It actually looks like how you would see it on a real car. You can even see the controls for the windows right there too. The last thing that I noticed in the interior that made it so unique was that seat belt. I know for others it may not be a big deal, but for me, wow, that's a game changer. I can't believe they actually had seat belts that actually look like fabric or if not fabric. So that's a really attention to detail right there. All right, now for that engine bay. So the first thing I notice here is, as soon as I opened it up, you see that hood latch right on the left-hand side. So again, it is uh, an interesting feature, but you don't necessarily need it just because it does have really well-made hood latches. They are different because the older versions had these things called dog legs and they tend to be a little bit heavy and they don't support the hood as well since the whole thing is die cast. Anyways, here is the engine right there. Very well detailed, all the pipes, plumbing, looking great, even the paint. And here are the hinges that I was talking about. All right, now for the passenger side. So there's not much to see here. We do see some vents that are well detailed. You can see that it's painted from the inside, like the surrounding vents. The floor is carpeted as well. And that's about it for this side. Everything else seems to be the same. The door card has pretty much the same detail. So is the seat belt. All right, so here's the interesting part about the trunk. You notice that there's two sets on each side of that hydraulic looking piece to put the trunk up. I was so amazed by that. Like that's, it almost feels almost over-engineered, but I love it. I loved every single moment of it. I can't believe they did this craftsmanship. I mean, the rest of the inside is basically just carpet, but I'm okay with that. They did very well. Well, that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me make more content like this. And please, let me know what's your favorite. Just drop it down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Anyways, see you guys next Wednesday, and have a good one.